first video, I covered all the sidelines in this position instead of e5, which is the main move. Today, we're going to move to e5. So all the other sidelines in the first video, it was just a lot of theory and a lot of uh, variations. So these videos hopefully are going to focus more on trying to understand the structure and trying to understand the opening, which I think will be more helpful. So just a few things about the Vinever itself. So the knight c3 move is not as flexible as let's say knight d2 or even e5 because after knight c3 white doesn't have this nice c3 move so let's say in the advanced variation so now white center is really strong because i can take on d4 and make e5 weak so that's why after knight c3 i like this bishop e4 move so right away putting pressure in the center and um just a few general things about the French defense. There are really two main ideas in the French. So let's say this kind of positions arise from a lot of lines when white has e5, d4. So for example, knight a2, knight d2, knight f6, e5 for the advanced variation. So there are really two really main ideas that black has. We're either going to solve our problems positionally because our c8 bishop is really weak after e6, so we can play b6 and try to exchange this pair of bishops. And since our c8 bishop is so weak, white's f1 bishop becomes a really strong piece because after it comes to d3, which it often does, it's attacking the h7 pawn. And whenever we castle kingside, it becomes a problem. Another main idea is, well, obviously not in this position knight right away, but whenever white has this pawn set up. We're going to play f6, and whenever this kind of exchange happens, we have a lot more space for our pieces, because we can put the bishop here, and then we have a lot of squares where uh, there's more acti piece activity for black. But at the same time, this pawn becomes really weak, and then there's this really nice square for the knight. So what you don't want to happen, you don't want to end up with this light square bishop versus a knight because the knight will be on e5 without and you can't kick out the knight from e5 with your light square bishop so it's just going to be a lot of suffering and the problem is you can't really do both ideas at the same time because if you exchange the bishop and play f6 so this kind of so without this bishop this pawn is going to become really weak and if you don't have the bishop and there are a lot of pieces in the position it's going to be really hard to defend this pawn and sometimes b6 is a little too slow, and sometimes after you play b6 it becomes hard because you don't get a lot of activity with f6, so you kind of have to wait around and see what white does, but at the same time white is not going to have a strong attack without the bishop. And if you do play f6, then you have to worry about e6 all the time, but then the position becomes really dynamic, so you have a lot of play for it too. Both ideas usually are playable, so sometimes it's a matter of taste, sometimes it's a matter of timing, but it's just something to keep in mind. One basic, um, really basic thing about the winner whenever... So we're going to play c5 here, putting a lot of pressure on d4. And after a3, white commits to this really bad pawn structure. So one thing you need to remember about, like, a really main thing is to not take on d4 too fast. Because if you take this, this position is better for white than this one. Because after taking and taking, uh, white can play c3. And then it has this really strong pawn structure and we don't have any pawns in the center to put pressure on these pawns. So today I'm going to be talking about the last sideline bishop d2 and then after that we're going to move to this position and I mentioned the queen g4 move but since it's such a main line and there's just so much to know first we're going to talk about other moves and there are three other moves in this position h4, knight f3, and a4. So today I'll be talking about bishop d2 and h4, and then we'll move on to the other moves. So actually before I talk about bishop d2, I want to talk about this queen g4 move again, which is, as I mentioned, is the most poisonous move in the winner. So one thing you're not going to fall for is take, take, dc. And now after b3, you're just going to lose your h8 rook. So this uh, whole discover check was not scary because I can't take care of it really fast. So again, we're going to sacrifice the g7 pawn. And here, queen h6 is better than queen h7 because after take, take, e3, here. Now knight e2. And since the c1 bishop was hanging 
White's only move was 92, and after knight c6, I don't think White has anything to show for the exchange. And here there is no rook b1 either, because I'll take, take, and queen a2. So for that reason, I'm going to play queen h6 here. And now queen a5 is... Um, now white has this knight b5 move, because the queen is protecting the bishop. So there are two, all kinds of threats, like knight c7 and knight d6. So this is not very pleasant. I wouldn't want to sacrifice an exchange. To, I mean, get an exchange to go to this kind of position. So instead, you can just play here. Before here. Now this is hanging. And knight b5, you can just play a6. And I think this position is already at least equal. I mean, all the pawns are really weak and we're going to develop really fast in castle. So I think this queen g4 is also nothing to worry about. So, <clears throat> going back to bishop d2. And I talked about bishop d2 in this position. The idea is still the same. Point of it is whenever we take on c3, white wants to take with a pawn. Um, I mean, with a bishop, not with a pawn. So they, he won't have this really bad pawn structure. And another idea is, we can't say, the problem is we can't take on d4 because of this knight b5 move. And if we exchange, then knight d6 is coming. And now we can't castle anymore, and I don't think this king here is going to be really safe after queen f4 or similar moves. And um, king f8 is actually a very common move in the French defense. Oftentimes you put your king on f8 after queen g4 kind of moves, but this isn't one of those times. And if you do, if you go back here, then your pieces are all on, on the wrong squares. This is where e7 is for your knight, not for your bishop. And now this knight has nowhere to go. Now you have to spend more time to try to put your pieces on the right square. So you're just going to be a few moves behind. So for that reason, uh, there are two moves here, knight e7 and knight h6. So the point is, after something like this, you can just castle. You don't have to worry about the knight d6 check anymore. And I actually like knight h6 a lot better, and I'll show you why I like it better after I show you why I like knight e7. So knight b5, here you go, castle. So white's knight is going to be a go on d6, which is going to be really annoying, because bishop d7 becomes really hard once the knight is on d6. And white's idea is they don't care if you take on d4, they don't care about their perfect center, they want to develop their pieces real fast and usually castle on the queen side and just like throw all their pieces on the king side. And since our king, we don't have the dark square bishop and there are really no pieces next to our king, it can become really dangerous. So f4, and f4 is an important move because after something like this, then I can play knight c6 and take on e5 and this knight is going to be loose. So at least white needs some kind of center. So this line has, was the main line for the longest time. So white is doing what I said he was going to do. And now white has, uh, black has to start playing a little more active because after knight g6 or castle and h4, h5, uh, if you play too passively, you try to play queen c7, bishop d7 and just hang, hang on. I mean, this d4 pawn, it's not even a permanent pawn, but can always win it back. It's going to be really hard to defend it. So you can't really hang on to the thought of having an extra pawn, so you have to play for activity. So f6, castle, knight f3, I mean rook f3. And for a long time, this was thought to be the main position, and it was thought to be good for black. But then this move was found. And that becomes really dangerous for black. Can't take on d6, there's a checkmate. So, I mean, you've come so far, so you have to take. And now it's really problematic because black is so behind in development. And there is no <coughs> position saving queen f8 because of bishop h7. And we'll lose the queen, simply. And now white has a lot of threats here. We want to play queen f7 and queen h5 h7 is hanging, knight f7 is coming. So let's say knight c6, check. And now white is just going to make a very simple move, king h1. And again, a lot of threats, now knight rook g1 is even threat. 
and queen h5 here immediately doesn't work because here and you can't take because i have this pin and now it doesn't really have anything better to do than to perpetual and sacrificing a piece for white uh, won't work because there just aren't enough pieces on the board to continue the attack so it's just going to be a perpetual but to avoid this perpetual white has this really nice king h1 move and after king h1, I think black's position is just too dangerous. And um, if you go here, I'll just take it. And then if you take... Now I have knight f7 is checkmate, queen h6, threats, rook g1. And there's even there's actually no way to stop knight f7. So this position is just unpleasant. But this line isn't so bad. You just have... You can play the main line. So there is this move, uh, bishop d7, instead of a6. So bishop d7, they take, take, so we, we've managed to trade our bad bishop, so now we're going to come and try to take on c5 and trade this bishop. And while that trade happens, the position is going to be pretty equal because then white doesn't even have any other pieces to play with. So white has to try to hang on to the pawn. And since we're so ahead in development, we're going to continue with our pawn sacrifice. Oops, not like that. B6, and white can take it right now because this position is going to become quite problematic. We're so ahead in development. So after something like c6 takes and rook c1, I actually kind of like white here. I think this d5 pawn, it's a fast pawn and it's a protected fast pawn, but it's not going to go anywhere. And white still has the bishop, and I think this once this pawn starts moving, I think they'll get far more dangerous than d5 pawn. So I don't know if it's a realistic evaluation, but I will take white in this position. Oh, also another just a general thing about this position. Don't be afraid about you losing this pawn because knight d7, queen c3, you can't just play f6 or something like that. And then after e5, you're just gonna have a good center and you're gonna take your pieces out real fast. So hanging out to that pawn is just not realistic for white. So since knight d7 was kind of unpleasant, so knight d6. And this move gives black more flexibility because the knight um, can go to g4 if needed. And I'll show you the difference between the two lines. So let's say white still continues with what they were doing before, castle. Before. So this is the same same line as before, except the knight is on h6 this time, and you'll see the difference. Here. F6. So the same line. So now again, we're not going to take on f3. Actually, there was a game with taking on f3, and it went something like this, if I remember correctly. And I mean, I wouldn't sacrifice an exchange if I don't have to. So since our knight is on h6 and it's more flexible, now we have this move. And now after this move, both e5 is hanging. And we have the knight e3 move in case if we need to do that. So this position is already pretty good for black. So white does not play this line. And this is why I like this flexibility that comes with knight e6 because we avoid the other unpleasant line. But of course white has other options here. So one of the options is whenever you play knight e6 they can just take it. And it looks kind of unpleasant, but the reality is it's going to be really hard for white to start attacking these pawns because we have a lot of activity in the center. So let's say a3, bishop a5. And again, they don't want us to take on d4 and weaken this position because next I want to come knight c6, take on d4, and then once I take on d4, this pawn is going to become really weak. So here, and you have to, whenever white takes like this, you have to be careful because b4 is coming. So I think in this position, if we take, take, and queen a5, this already has to be equal because knight f3, e5 is hanging. h6 pawn is not going to hang for a while. Now I want to play knight e4. Can't, 
because this is going to be a chronic weakness. So the queen is confined to this d2 square protecting the c3 pawn. And white doesn't really have anything better to do than just to play c4. And then we can exchange. And I don't think this is going to become a major weakness in the end game. So I think this position should be fine for black. But if you don't want to do this, you can also play d4. d4 here, here. And again, it's going to be really hard for white to get to this pawn because all these pawns are so weak. So white can't afford to do something like this and lose these pawns. Because now, next, I'm going to play knight c6, which should be 7 castle. So by taking the h6 pawn, white doesn't really achieve anything. Okay. So I think both moves are playable. So instead of that, you can also play e3. So again, the same idea. White came bishop d2, so they can take it with c3 with the bishop. So this is what white wanted. They wanted to be able to take back with a piece. And here we're going to play our very French-like move, b6, trying to exchange the bishops. And whenever you play b6, white has this trick, this resource. They're going to check you, bishop d7, and go back with the bishop. As opposed to going, playing bishop d3 when you have bishop a6. Now you're going to exchange and there's nothing they can do about it. But after this check, you don't have the bishop exchange anymore. So even though you develop your bishop, white actually gains something by not allowing you to exchange. But here we're just going to play normal chess, take, take. Can't take with the knight because I'll take. And you don't have this move, trying to take back on e5. Because intermediately I'll take it with a check. So, bishop d4. Going to take, take. So, another French, very French solution, playing f6, trying to open the center. He takes, takes. Then we're going next we're going to play e5 and get the center. So white is going to check. And conveniently there is no bishop g6 because this is protected. So if something like this, the idea behind knight b5 is to play knight d6 because there's a pin. So g6 here. And this position is just equal. White can't move to the queen and then give up this pawn. And our king in the center is not weak at all because in two moves it's going to come to g7 and rook f8 and it's going to be perfectly fine. So white has to take this and this position again is another equality. So going back to the main position. Another move white can do is just play simply normal chess, developing chess, knight f3. Knight c6. And if a3, then we'll take, take here. Knight d6 is always a nice trick because the bishop is attacking the knight. And I think after rook e8, this might be in trouble. So something like this here, castle. You can maybe even play bishop g4 and just exchange. And I don't think white's going to have much. So if white can just continue playing normal chess, bishop d3, here, take, take, castle. And now that there is no dark square bishop, our knight on h6 is very, very safe. So now there's nothing to worry about it. And the next move we're going to play f6. If white takes, then we'll just play f6. And then we'll bring the knight to f7. Ideally, the knight would be on e7, so it could go to c6, but on f7 it also should be fine. And then we'll try to play e5, and if we take, then there is no weak e5 square anymore, because there is no pawn on d4, so this is another position you can play. And if you want to avoid all of this, you can do what I do, which is I start with knight e7. If a3, then I take, take, and c5. So this is just a transposition. And if bishop d2, you're not going to play c5 to not get into a transposition with whether f6, I mean b6. Again, trying to trade the bishops. So if queen g4, we're actually, there's this move. And this is a very common idea in French. Whenever you put your knight on f5, it's very common to put your pawn on h5. 
because white it's not a problem for white to push his kingside pawn sometimes. So if you don't, he can play g4 and kick out your knight. And this is a good post for your knight. But here it's actually a forced line. And knight d4, and then next move you'll play c5, knight is well actually next move will bring our bishop back. Because we don't want it to get trapped. And then let's say h4. Then here, then we'll play c5, knight to six, and all our pieces on good squares, and this is another position you can play. So if you don't want to go into the knight to six variation, you can just start with knight to seven and avoid all this nonsense. So either is an option. So we're officially done with the sidelines, so now we're finally going to be moving on to this line. So, as I mentioned, Queen G4 is the most poisonous line. Now, Black is forced to make a commitment. You're either going to play Castle and face the consequences of having your king here without the Dark Square Bishop and Bishop B3 and all this attack that White's going to get, or you're going to play Queen C7 and play the poison pawn variation and sacrifice a pawn and have the consequences of have giving up two of your kingside pawns. So, like I said, we're going to look at this h4 move. And the uh, idea behind h4, white is just trying to play h5, h6 and take advantage of the fact that we don't have a dark square bishop. So if we do something really slow, after something like this, this bishop is going to become monstrous and after bishop g7 this pawn is going to be really weak. And you you don't want this to happen. You don't have the f8 bishop, so you can't open up the position like this. And it's still it's very flexible move, and I think uh, it's kind of quite dangerous because queen g4 is still an option. This is an option, and uh, so you, you can't castle here. I think castling here is just too dangerous because after something like this, once the rook comes. White even has more pieces attacking you. And the king, white's king in the center is quite safe. It's really going to be hard to get to it. So I think this position is going to become really dangerous. And whenever you're not forced to castle, you shouldn't. Because you have other options. And you shouldn't commit your king to something when you have your other options and you can't think about where you want to put your king. So the weakness of this h4 pawn is white is wasting three moves trying to achieve what he's trying to achieve. So we get good play on the queen side and in the center. So usually white sacrifices this d4 pawn. So there b6 here is too slow because h5, h6, queen g4. And now as opposed to the other position if we castle, we can't even castle because h6 is hanging. And you don't want to play king f8 here because this rook is just coming here right away and you're going to face really big problems. So there are two ways of playing, knight c 6 You can start with queen a5 too, but let's start with this move. h5. Here, bishop d2 can give up that pawn. Here, here, queen a4. So now I want to take knight d4 and then c2 would hang. And like, actually here I can take like this, and you can do this. I'll take this too, and then I'll take this back. You don't want to sacrifice all your pawns. So knight f3 takes bishop d3 and h6. So now there is thankfully no rook h4 because we'll just take and this hangs. For which reason white plays king f1. Now rook h4 is a big threat. And this is was a game between Nakamura and Shulman. And Shulman won a really nice game and it really shows black's ideas in this line. And Yuri Shulman is actually a very excellent Winover player, so if you want to learn more about the Winover, you should look at his games because he plays it so well and he really, really knows his stuff. So even though he's not one of the 2700 players, he really knows his theory, so it's really safe to follow his games if you want to learn more. So b6. So this is all very typical to everything we talked about before. We're going to exchange the bishops and, again, giving up this pawn. So this position, it's um, very double-sided. I think it's dangerous for both sides. White's king is not that much better than the black king because anytime I can put my king on d7 and my king on d7 is going to be really safe and then bring this rook too. But the problem is white has this really advanced pawn. So this pawn, we can go into an end game. We can trade queens because then this pawn is a pass pawn and there's a rook behind it, which means it's just going to run 
all the way to h7 and become a big headache. And if bishop can get to bishop g5 and f6, then can have all kinds of problems. So black still has to continue to play very, very active. So queen d4, winning the pawn back, and bringing all our pieces into the game. Bishop g5, queen a5. Now rook c2 is a big threat. And f4, rook c2. And here Hikaru played a really bad move. And now this king is really trapped. And in a couple of moves the game was over. Queen d3 here. And it's just a simple sacrifice. And very beautiful queen e3. Can take, there's a checkmate. And regardless of queen h4 or rook g1, rook c1 is coming and it's the game over. And I think this line is not just like easily won for black. If we go, even though black does really well in this line, I think this position is very playable for white. I think this pawn sacrifice should be um, quite legitimate for white. So if you want to play this position, I would suggest playing against someone, against the computer, or against a friend, because you don't want this game to be the, your first game to be over the board in the tournament game. You want to be prepared, you want to know the ideas of what to do. So if you do something a little incorrectly, you can just very easily get blown off the board. You really want to know your ideas and what not to do, so you can play a solid game. But instead of that, there is also this queen c7 move. And queen c7 is against queen g4, because queen g4 is impossible, I'll take, and there is no taking back because of this check. So this is a little slower. So knight f3, h5, h6, transposes, so here, here, you can start with h5, will come to the same position, and here, check, if you go back, c4, and this is a very typical French idea, to put the bishop on a4, and there are several ideas behind it, not only did we get our bishop out and we're putting pressure on c2, there is no a4 for white, so which means this bishop is very confined. So this bishop and our pawns on h6 too, so there's no g5 square, so it's going to be really hard for white to do anything. So next, since we haven't committed to our, our king to anything, next we're going to take our knight out and castle on the queen side, and then we can try to get play on the king side with f6 or f5, and then rook g8 and g6, and try to open up the file, and we're going to get a really good play here. So whenever you're not again whenever you're not forced to castle on the king side don't because you want to have the option whenever you close the position with c4 which is a common theme in this kind of positions without queen g4 you want to be able to castle on the queen side but because you can just start playing on the king side in your king is going to be far more safe on the queen side so after h4 there are two options i think both are playable and if you're brave enough, you should play queen a5 and take the pawn, but if you're in a safer position, queen c7 is also playable. So thank you for listening in. Today we covered the bishop d2 sideline, the last sideline in the position, and we finally moved on to the e5 variation and looked at h4. And next time I'll talk about a4 and knight f3, and those positions are, the two moves are very similar to each other, and the positions are really interesting, so I hope you'll tune in and I hope you enjoyed this show.